guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to start off with a little bit of good news. I know it's not often on this channel but we get a bit of good news. But the boost leak that I have had since God knows the beginning of the car has been found. So I am over the moon. RH Tuning did their bit and they've actually found it where many garages have failed. So let me just show you the little pain in my bottom location which needs sorting out for it to hold boost properly so then it appears that this line here going into the car to this pit here where the uh, math housing is this is the culprit that's been causing me the leaks the whole time it's right here on this clip so my plan of action is underneath here there is a little metal pole that goes out so what i'm going to do is i'm going to snip it off about just there right on the very knuckle and i've got 10 mil hose coming that you're going to join it up together i'm going to put a jubilee clip on each side little 10 mil hose clip and fingers crossed that is the issue sorted so just waiting on the postman to come and then that will be dealt with and i'll be over the moon because no more engine check lights which is absolutely ideal okay then guys on today's episode of this build whatever you guys want to call it well it's my car on today's episode i have bought myself a few little bits and bobs i have got radiator coolant cover that i'm going to be spraying red i have got the um, a bung to go in the washer top bottle to be sprayed red you notice they're both black that's because paint mods we're out of stock on red ones, so I've got my red paint in the background, ready to rock, and we're, I'm gonna spray that up and slap it on. I know you guys have seen my engine bay before, and you're thinking, you already have red caps, Aaron. Why on earth do you want more? Well, simple question, answer to that question is, uh, Paint Mods just recently released the silicone joiner that goes over the top of the washer bottle. This thing here which means you need the bung to use it. No longer can I get away with using this red cap here, right? No longer can that one be used if I want to put this on because it sleeves over the top of there and then you have the red bung put on top. That's the plan of action on that. You need to chisel it off. And about the radiator cap. Well, you see, yeah, funny story. The other day when I was just giving my engine bay a quick detail, it fell off in my hand. So I did the logical thing. I got some glue and I glued it back on. Got to work the next day, popped the bonnet because I, you know, was checking on the hoses to make sure they're all intact in my brake. And I saw this. The glue has um, kind of expanded and bubbled all the paint and gone all the way through and eaten its way through. So I'm hoping it's only in the top one and not in the bottom cap because um, yeah, that's gonna be a right pig else. So I'm going to uh, take that off, fingers crossed. It doesn't feel like it's gone through the bottom cap. So I'm just kind of hoping it's eaten its way through the top one. I'm gonna remove it and I've got some tiger seal to stick it down properly rather than the glue I used. So yes, I know rookie mistake, but like most of you, I just used what I had on hand at the time. It was in my garage. I ran out of tiger seal when I've done my grill for you know my intercooler but speaking of grills for intercoolers i've got myself this bad boy someone popped up on a forum the other day and said hey would anybody be interested in buying these my friend is starting up a business i looked at it and i thought damn that looks fine it looks near enough identical to the delta styling one that was brought out a while back don't quote me on how long ago but they stopped production pretty fast and you can't get hold of them anymore so that is the reason why i bought that one the name of the company i'll give out in a minute because i'll have to check the details because off the top of my head it's gone my apologies if you are watching but i'm going to be getting that onto my front end of the car today and i've also got plans for around where the holes are You'll notice I've still got lots of dead bugs, admittedly, but there is still like the Ford sign and the holes where the number plate was. I want to smooth that over and draw up some sort of line somewhere. 
and spray it black just to tie it in and keep it nice and neat. Might as well spray the mesh a little bit of gloss black as well while I'm at it, just because then it will tie in with the new grill. Then guys, that's the plans on today's episode. I suppose I best get the sandpaper out and crack on. <laughs> Now I know what you guys are thinking, why on earth is he putting more tacky bits on his car and all stuff like that, you know, when I'm trying to make it 350 brake horsepower. Well you see, right around the corner from now is Autofest. If you guys don't know what it is, it is the premier car show, or it's a festival in Devon. It's got so many decent acts lined up, it's got good car show, show and shine, there's all sorts lined up. It's run by Time Scene, and if you know who Time Scene are, they are the cream of the crop of all modified vehicles in Devon. If you are part of Time Scene, you know, you've, you've landed on your feet because they are such a lovely group of guys and girls, it's unbelievable. So the reason why I'm tarting up my car a little bit more with a nice grill, some more caps is because I don't want to let the side down with my car. I know there's nothing wrong with it as it stands, yes, but I'm not happy with it. So I'm not going to put a car into a show, especially representing my friends, you know, and my car family, and just show them up because what's the point? You know, for a couple hundred quid, I can get my car looking gleaming. That's the plan anyway. So this is all about Autofest. This is all about doing it up and smartening it up and just, you know, making my car that little bit more special for these guys. So big shout out to Autofest and Time Scene. I will be there on the Saturday. Sadly, I won't be there on the Sunday. It is a two day event. Um, if you're already watching this video, I'm afraid it's too late. You would not have had the chance to buy tickets if you have not already. But keep an eye out for it next year. You know, tr you can come down, you can camp, you can stay the night. It's at Smeetharp, which is in Honiton. I want to say off the top of my head. But keep an eye out for it next year, because if it's just as good as this year's planning, well, coming up to be, you want to be in on it next year. So I will be there and I will be recording on the Saturday and getting a good look around and giving you guys hopefully a decent, you know, eye view of what's going on at this car show. So then let's get back to it and let's try and tart this car up because I am not going to be letting the team down. <laughs> majority of today down in Plymouth having my car looked at and having been smoke tested on all, all that um, we're probably gonna pick this video up again tomorrow where hopefully I'll be fitting my grill and all that other jazz to my front bumper as you can see I got both the caps done in red and clear coat they're now drying they'll be nice and dry overnight Tomorrow I'm going to flat them back and polish them up to make them look nice and glossy. While I was at it, I thought I might as well take my battery positive terminal cover off. And I uh, rubbed that back and sprayed that up just so it keeps in with the uh, same sort of shade of red as my engine bay. This one here does have a couple of little runs in it, but like I say, I'll polish it out tomorrow and it'll be perfectly fine. It's just that one's a bit fresh wet paint as well, hence why it looks a little bit bubbly on top because it, the clear coat's still not settled yet. But these two on the other hand have come out very well. I'm very happy with them. So yeah, we'll pick this video up again tomorrow. So I'll see you guys then. Okay, so it's now the next day from where we left off from yesterday. I've got my bumper off because I didn't want to break any of the tabs on my top grill, so I took it off and removed it that way. 
I've got it all masked up now, plastic bagged up all around where I don't want to spray. I'll talk you guys through in a minute what I'm going to try and achieve with that today. I've taken the caps that I sprayed yesterday and got into gloss. God, it's bright out here. And, um, well, I've rubbed them back and I have uh, gone over them again with a little bit more uh, clear coat and I'm really happy with the finish on those. They have turned out like glass. I don't know how well that picked up then because I literally just turned the camera around and pointed and prayed that I got that in shot. So I'm happy with how it's all turning out so far. That's all glossy and glass-like outside. Right then, how I'm gonna tack this now. Okay, so you can see from where I've uh, cut the holes, it's still a little bit rough around the edges, so I'm gonna rub that back. Where the number plate holder used to be, you've got these recesses. I'm gonna try and smooth that out best as I can along with this Ford badge. I just wanna try and get it smoothed and the holes filled. I've got some glazing putty left over from uh, when we done the black plastics in my boot. So when these are flat, I'm gonna put the putty in and I don't know, maybe put a glue something behind just to hold it in place, but then try and sand it smooth. I'm also gonna try and knock some of the rough edge off of this so it doesn't look so, you know, in your face with the line going through. So I'm just gonna try and knock the worst of that out. I'm not expecting this to be smooth, but it's gonna be an improvement and it's gonna be gloss black hopefully by the end of today because I do need to use this car to get to work tomorrow. So that is the plan of action. The grill is out, so it's ready for the new one to go in. So yeah, I think I'm gonna now try and crack on. I've got my DA set up and ready, the compressor's turned on and ready. Let's try and get this thing nice and smooth. So what I've done so far is I've sanded it back as far as I possibly can. I'll use some 240 grit to try and knock the worst of the writing and the number plate what's it's out. I don't know, holes and all that jazz. I tried my best to knock it all out. I've then uh, filled everything with that glazing putty. Just like to, just to help skim over the top and then I'm going to go over the DA again. Not quite with 240 grit, probably something lower, like a 400 or an 800 along those lines, just to blend it in with the paint here. And then I am going to start looking into primer. So um, while I'm waiting for that to set off, I'm just going to chill and take it easy for a bit, I think. Okay then, guys. Where I'm at at the moment is the putty set, and I've sanded it back. You can still see the ring and the Ford logo, but that's been smoothed in. I'm not gonna lie and say it's absolutely perfect because it's not, you know, it's all smooth. It's gone, I've gone over 240 and 800. So it is ready to start painting. So let's get the first layer of paint on. I'm not gonna bore you guys by showing you the process on how to paint a car because there are many videos on that online already. This is more of a uh, catch up on me smartening up this front end of my car, getting it ready for auto fest. Because as I've said already, it needs to be smart. I do not want to let the side down. So let's crack on with this and I'll show you the finished result. Okay guys, so I am very pleased with the finish of this as it stands. There's been no reactions. There's very little in the way of orange peel. The reflection is absolutely great. There is one little bit of muck, which I'm really cheesed off about. Just as I was doing the clear coat, it blew in. And other than that, I am very happy with the outcome of this. I can't see any runs. There's only a couple little dimples where the holes used to be. So all in all, great success. I am very, very happy with how this has turned out. 
So I'm going to wait for this to dry. And while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to take a closer look at my washer bottle because that cap outside should be nice and baked off now. So what I've got to do is I've got to remove this, like so. Easy as that, really is. And then I need to remove this little lug here on the side, which I'm just gonna cut off with a Stanley knife or something and then sand it back smooth. And then I'm gonna have a go at slipping the pipe on and putting the bung on and seeing how it goes. There shouldn't be any reason why this isn't straightforward, so I'm just I'm not going to bother recording it because it's putting a bit of silicone over the top of a plastic pipe, essentially. But no, I'm really, really happy with that. Of course, the you know I've got to wait for it to practically be nigh on dry before I attempt to put the grill in place. Don't really want to touch it. So, yeah, all in all, so far, so good. So... Fingers crossed it actually does come out all right. And as easy as one, two, three, that's that installed. Does look a little out of place, I'm not gonna lie. I'll probably measure up the silicone joiner that they sent and order it in red. Maybe even spray the cap a different color yet. I don't know, but it does, it is an improvement regardless. So, just stands out as it's a different shade of blue to the rest of it. So, yeah, I'm unsure about that one, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so yeah, interesting. I don't know what to say about that really. It really was as simple as one, two, three, cut, slide and plop it on. So yeah, that's that one little mod finished off. Considering this was nothing more than a rough piece of red plastic beforehand, you know, you, saw, you know what it's like in your engine bay if you're in an ST. Um, I did bugger all in the way of prep. I barely even rubbed it back. It's held up pretty damn well and the paint's taken to it, which is I'm very surprised about. Um, I'm going to slide this one back into place now. And hopefully... Probably be easier if I didn't just break my tripod. I could actually, uh... yeah, there you go. Now that's all tying in. So you've got factory orange peel, you know, because let's face it, these paint comes with, uh, these cars paint comes with orange peel from factory. So uh, yeah, it ties in lovely. Okay, so that's the tapes and everything off. Oh, hang on a minute. I missed a bit of tape, but I'll get that in a bit. So, yeah, all in all, very good. I did slip down here removing a tape though. So I am just gonna get a little paintbrush and a bit of black paint and touch it in. No one will be none the wiser when it's touched in and I've gone over with machine polish. And then, but yeah, the finish on that though, admittedly it's gone dusty. I'm actually fairly happy, fairly, fairly happy. So it's time to take a look at this grill and get that into place. So yeah, that's the painting side done and it is, I'd say, it's, it's pretty much dry. But now it's time to fit this grill. I, I know I didn't post a very good picture of it online, but I'll let you guys have a look over it now. Um, it's got like a slot in at both sides to let extra cooling come in because it's got a little bit more edging than the standard one, so, but it's making up for it with a nice stylish mesh. Um, I forgot to, the name of the company that makes this. Really nice guy on the end of the phone. Yet again, I've forgotten his name, so <laughs> I do um, apologize on that, but he was a sincere guy, and he, we had a nice long conversation. A really nice chap. Um, the name of the company which this is from, has literally just started up. It's called Cruise Sport, spelt with a K. Um, you'll probably find them on Facebook as all new businesses um, tend to start up on Facebook and they advertise through there. I don't blame them, it's free and it's um, fairly straightforward. The only advice he gave me when it came to fitting this grill was just to dab a little bit of glue on the back of the seals when you poke it through just to stop it coming out again. Um, it is made from fiberglass and mesh 
from the looks of things. So it's fairly sturdy. It's a little bit heavier than the um, standard grill. The only thing that lets it down in my eyes is the, it's still got the number plate um, recess, but it's a lot less in your face than the original grill. So all in all, as it stands, I haven't attempted putting it on yet, but as it stands, it's a very well-made product. So we'll just find out now uh, how easy it fits on. Hopefully this should make the front end of my car look a lot more aggressive and I'm hoping for the, I know it sounds a bit sad, but I'm hoping for the AirTech logo to be a little bit more visible to the eye with the mesh on. I know it's, it's kind of stealthed into the car being black and red because red never really does stand out when it's behind grills, no matter what. So if you really want it to stand out and be in your face, I suggest uh, you order a white one, not a white grill, but the white AirTech logo. It just stands out that little bit better, white or blue. But um, yeah, I'm gonna have a go at fitting this. And yeah, we'll just see how it turns out really. Okay then guys, honest opinion though, on this grill, I would give it an eight and a half out of 10. The, the build quality is good, don't get me wrong, but it, so in some places, it is a little bit temperamental to fit. You push in one side, it pops out the other. Um, it, well, you've got to remember at the end of the day, any aftermarket part will never fit 110%. You know, it's not standard, it, it's not the one that's come from factory. Would I recommend it? Well, yeah, I would actually. I've had Maxton design stuff fit a lot worse than this. So, you know, for a new upcoming business venture from Cruise Motorsport, I tell you what, I, I would recommend them. Like I say, I've had Maxton stuff fit worse. And to be honest, I think that looks really smart and it does tie in with what I've got going on with the front end. It really does. But on the, as I did take the guy's advice, when you push it through and after you've got it sit in place, as happy as you can be. It, as I say, you can try your best. It's n well, I can't get it to marry up 100%. I'd say I'm about 95% there with, you know, with stock fitment. But the tabs on the back are a lot thicker because they're made of fiberglass rather than ABS plastic. And I did dab a little bit of Tiger Seal just on the backs of the tabs just to make sure it doesn't flick out. I was recommended on the phone to do that though by the owner of the company. So fair play to him for being up, you know, straight up and being honest with me. But would I recommend it? I've already said this, yes. So it's well worth it. You know, it's different to the stock one. If you're going for a bit of a racy look. Um, it did cost trying to remember I think I paid 135 pounds for it only because I was one of the first people to buy it so I you know whatever price they're charging I think it's got I, if I remember rightly please don't quote me on this guys I think it's going to be around 150 pound marker now because it was only a you know like a first come price that I got it for because I was one of the first people to buy it but all in all it is a good product I just struggle to um, get it to line up myself, but it's doing the job. And after a bit of fiddling here and there, I have managed to get it to sit fairly flush. So to save yourself on swearing, I would certainly rope in a friend to help you. But with it being my day off during the middle of the week and the sun shining, I don't have patience to wait for friends. So I like to crack on and do stuff myself, as you can already tell. Yeah, I look a mess. I'm hot and sweaty, covered in tiger seal, covered in dirt and grime from rolling around and spraying and just, you know, having shits and giggles, as you do. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna wait for this tiger seal to half go off. As I say, I only put a dip and dab on the uh, tabs behind, just to help hold it in place. So I'm gonna wait a little bit, probably go and have a drink and chill out and 
it's my day off, you know, I've got work tomorrow. Um, and then I'll fit it back on the car and I'll show you guys how it looks afterwards. I'm a little bit disappointed that I, when removing the tapes, a little bit of paint came off because the finish of that job I was really, really happy with. It's just a shame that I've got to touch it up a little bit, but I hope I've done Time Scene Proud with this. I hope that they'll be happy with uh, my new little front end look going into their uh, show, Auto Fest. I will be there, I will be recording. So I'm gonna get this on the car in a minute when it's all set up and I'll show you how it looks. guys so that is my car ready for auto fest admittedly it needs a bit of a clean but what car doesn't before a car show let's face it there's going to be more bugs and god knows what on the front of there before i even get round to the car show it is on the 20th and 21st this month i do believe please don't quote me on the dates it's all online and regardless i will be filming so keep an eye out if your car's there i'll do my best to capture it on the saturday that i am there um, so then, I wonder what I'm going to be working on on the next episode of uh, Razy TV. Any ideas? God knows what. But there's a little fadiant red thing back there, aka orange. What, what colour do you call it? Molten orange, my friend. Molten orange. So yeah, see you all again. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all soon.